Okay, we're recording. Episode 14. Um, pleasure to be joined by Song Yadong. Uh, Neil, I'll pass this immediately over to you. Some excellent work on getting Song on the podcast. Great to see you, sir. Um, welcome to Transatlantic MMA. Yes, yeah. so Song, thanks again for joining. Um, very excited to speak with you. For, for anyone who doesn't know, Song is currently ranked number 15. Um, just come off a, a fight of the night performance. So very excited to speak with you and, and kind of see what's, you know, what's coming next. So, um, yeah, if you want to give us a quick kind of breakdown, you know, do you have any, any fights that are, that are kind of lined up or, or coming up? You know, what's, what's next for you? Um, so um, we're looking for a fight um, on October 31st, um, but I only have the date right now. I haven't yet have any opponent. Yes. Nice. Okay. So that's, that's very, very soon then, right around the corner. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. And, and who, you know, out of anyone that you could pick, you know, have you, have you kind of asked for any names? Um, Oh, nice, nice. Oh, yeah, that, that, would, that would be a lot of fun. Um, and tell us, you know, obviously, the, your, your last fight, you know, with, uh, with Chito Vera, um, your mm-hmm. performance, performance of the night, you know, awesome, awesome fight. So thank you very much for that. Um, you know, ended a, a little bit controversially. Um, is is that something that you would like to to run back? You know, would you like to fight Cheeto again? Mm-hmm. 对。嗯，呃， mm. uh, so for uh his next fight, he doesn't want to fight Chito, uh because they just uh finished with one fight and he think it's not that um new for mm. the audience. So maybe like later when they all um ranking a better um place, maybe he wants to fight again. For the okay. title, for the for the belt, maybe yeah, in uh, <laughs> in some time. Uh, Chito, is it um. Is it bantamweight for you now, not featherweight, or is it maybe both? You know, are you only thinking bantamweight no, moving forward? No, bantamweight, bantamweight. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. It's and maybe, funny. maybe you'll. I know you're very young, so maybe when you get uh-huh. older, you'll be yeah, uh, yeah welterweight. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> um, and yeah, I take it you're going to watch tonight's fight. You know, obviously we've got we've got Frankie Edgar and and, and mm-hmm. Munoz tonight. So mm-hmm. you know, is is that a you know one of those guys? You know, maybe maybe the winner of them if if you win your next fight. You know, something like that on the cards for you. Yes. Yeah, he said for uh those two people, uh for sure that they are um having a higher ranking than him and then he he would always want to fight a, a higher ranking guy. Yeah, so no matter who won the fight tonight? He he wants like both of the guy he, he wants to fight. Excellent, excellent. And I like it. Yeah, that's that's the attitude to have. And um, in in terms of you know, I suppose your your training through through COVID. Um, you know, how, how has it been for you? You're you're out in in California, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, 我的我的那个拳馆一直开着嘛，然后我一直保持正常的训练。对。Uh, he said his his uh, the gym that he's training is um keep opening and he's uh is in California right now, so he's kind of like normal training. 
Okay. Well, that, that's, that's good to hear. I, I know it's yeah, kind yeah. of different for, for every camp. Um, and do you have any, any plans on, on going home or, you know, are you, are you staying, um, you know, are you staying here long term? You know, what's your, what's your plan? Um, He's planning probably go home after the uh, next fight because right now he's having something that coming up. Um, yeah, so afterwards, maybe he would plan to go home. Excellent, excellent. And you know, obviously, Song, you know, you're, you're 20, 22, I believe. So, you know, very, very young still, you know, very early on, your, in, sorry, early on in your career, but achieved a lot already. So, you know, what's, um, what's kind of, you know, next for you, what, what's been the, your favorite part about being in the UFC so far? Which? <laughs> yeah, he was wondering, uh, what do you mean by which part? Um, I, I, well, I suppose, you know, the overall experience, you know, training with, uh, you know, who, who's been your favorite training uh, partner, you know, mm -hmm. th things like that. Okay. Uh, um, so it, it's about the um, uh, UFC itself because it has a lot of um, like top He's fighters. Yeah. So they fight together and he got a lot of like experiences from the, the fight That's and right. also from the, the fighters. And then um, uh, his um, coach Uriah Faber also helped him a lot with his um you know the the the, the overall um fighting skills yeah not only like the technique but also like mentality stuff like that yeah okay. and would you would you ever fight uriah would you know <laughs> if you ever got the chance if he came back would you ever fight him probably not because uh, Uriah is managing him too, so he thinks Uriah wouldn't manage them to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I think that's a that's a good decision for for everyone, um, and. You know, I suppose training training with a with a legend. You know, like he's obviously somebody that um, he's a legend of the sport. You know, what what's kind of I suppose what have you learned most from him? You know, what what has he changed about your game? Um. 精神上他一直支持着我嘛，因为我比较年轻，有些时候我会呃打退堂鼓，然后呃有一些呃有些思想很不成熟，所以就他给我他一直就是呃鼓励我支持我们，然后每天去督促我训练，这样。嗯。
他说我什么时候来的美国？这就是你你跟啊、呃、U F C 是什么样一个机缘和 T M F 没有什么很大的关系面的。哼、啊，嗯，我那个第一次来美国训练是我自己花钱来的嘛，嗯、然后我到美国，然后后来中国选选人到我去那个 New Mexico 嗯里面训练，嗯、然后。就这样，我打 U S C， 打 U S C， 哪儿你替替补，你吧？我替补，对对，那你就说吧。<笑> OK， so um， 呃，我从那个大比赛多少推？啊、uh, ， he he he， I forgot the beginning。啊，对对，你先说那个，你说我那个，你说我那个那个那个。那个那个那个那个假的那个，我十六岁不背大比赛，所以换的假， uh, uh, 所以很多时候我的比以前的比赛的可能就年龄跟现在差不多。啊，嗯 ，He said he started to fight when he was sixteen. Uh, for MMA,、um, but since he he was、um, still a teenager, and then his manager at the time changed the the ID for him because he couldn't fight、um, until he's eighteen, and then、um, yeah,、oh, that was, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was yeah、uh, that was his first first fighting, and then、um, for a team Afmil like he searched online. He because he he fight、uh, MMA and he knows、uh, Team Afmil is the the best、um, camp for、um, baton weight and then like small weight fighters,、sure. yeah. And then he searched online and then、um, I helped him to email the manager at Team、mm-hmm. Afmil so we came、uh, by ourselves the fir- very first time. We don't know Uriah, we don't know anybody there. It's just we came and then we connect,、uh, build up a, a, a connection. Perfect. And I, then. I, I,、uh, Sorry, sorry. Go ahead. Oh、uh, yeah, that was back in two thousand seventeen. Right. Three years. Yeah, I, I was. That was my question. How, how long? How long have you been with with Team Alpha Male? But yeah,、uh-huh. okay, sorry, sorry. Sorry. Please, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. And then in the middle,、um, UFC China, they kind of have a program that they select、um, talent fighters,、uh, potentially that can fight for UFC, and then they send、um, probably about fifteen. Ten, twelve people. Ten, ten. ten. Oh, ten, ten people. Ten, ten fighters to、uh, New Mexico in Upper Cuki,、uh, to Jackson, Jackson Wink.、Oh, okay.、Yeah. Did you work with、uh, Dean Amasinger?、Um, is is did you have any connection with him? Because I know he、mm-hmm. heads up the Chinese、um, Institute in、um, obviously for the UFC. Dean. Dean. This is a beard. Ah, he doesn't know. No. Okay. All right. No. No problem. I thought I thought you might know him.、Um, but yeah, perfect. And what's been the?、Uh, that's you know that's crazy. Thank you for the for the background. You know,、Take、so、idea. you've you've essentially been a pro for you know for eight years. But well, tech technically four years, and you've already had twenty fights. So you know how how does your how does your body feel?、Mm-hmm. 他说就是啊，你我知道，就是打了二十多场比赛，四四年还四年，没有四年没有吧？就十六岁，今年六年。嗯。Six years, no four years. Six years. Six years.、Okay. Yeah. 就还好吧，就减重就挺辛苦的。嗯。呃 ，legally, legally four years, huh? Two extra years. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he said, um, for. Uh, fighting itself, it's like it's it's not the hardest part. It's just it's the weight cutting, kind of like yeah,、mm. yeah, make him struggle. And and given you know how well you perform that that featherweight, you know, is that something you're looking at down the line? You know, how long do you want to stay at at, at bantamweight for? Hmm. He said, "Is your, uh, weight performance is good." 就是你有没有考虑过往这一条路上去发展？你要你想要在楚亮级待多久？嗯，因为因为之前那个飞波跟我说过嘛，可能考虑让我升级别，但我觉得我跟他们体重平时都差十磅左右，嗯，所以我觉得我的体重，我的身形还是属于班统辈，我还是比较适合打。我说他们太大了，就没有任何优势，对。Um, he he was saying、um, it was a con- consideration to go to further way. He had the conversation with、uh, Uriah before, but he was thinking、um, for the normal weight compared with other further way fighters, he's still、um, smaller than them. So he think it's not a advantage for him to fight 
you feel the weight right now, his body type is still um, suits better for batting weight. Okay, sure. Maybe uh, win the bantamweight belt and then move up for your mm -hmm. your second belt. Okay. Right? Yeah. Uh, and and Song, I'm I'm always curious. Uh, you know, when we, when we speak to fighters, who their favorite fighters are. So maybe maybe no bantamweights, but when you're watching fights, who do you who do you like to watch the most at the moment? Anderson Silva. Anderson. Anderson Silva and. Uh, 那个乔治圣皮埃尔，他说谁呀？GSP，GSP， uh, GSP? Uh, yeah. yeah， two legends， uh, us, us yeah. too， yeah， yeah， us too。Do you, do you uh -huh. think GSP will fight Khabib？ 我觉得会吧。He thinks so. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. I hope so. I hope so. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> I like it. And Song, just getting back to the the first, you know, the first question you mentioned, the Sun Tao. Um, is that in the works? You know, is that getting close to being signed, or is that just who you no. kind of want next? I have no. 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 So it's just a, a time that they mentioned to us, not yet um, settled for anything. Okay, perfect. Well, Look, we're going to be following you very closely. Um, you know, it's it's been it's been a pleasure speaking with you, and thank you very much for translating. We really appreciate it. Thank you both. Um, yeah, so we're we're really excited for to to watch you, and you know, we've we've got a long time to watch you in the UFC. So you know, best of luck with your upcoming fight, and it was it was a pleasure speaking with you both. Thank you very much. Yes, thank, thank you, you guys. thank you guys. Thanks, thank guys. Great weekend. You too. <laughs> you too. Thank you. See you know, bye bye. Oh. Hello, Neil. It's um, that's crazy, isn't it? He's twenty-two years old. And twenty-two. Already... You know, I realized how how long ago it was since I've been twenty-two. I was like, fuck. <laughs> I know. And like, yeah. He, I mean, he seems. I, I think he. You know. I mean, it's obviously very clear that he's a phenomenal fighter. But you know, everything that he said there about you know what's right for him. You know, why he picked Uriah. Like, he seems to have a very good head on his shoulders. So. Yeah, thank you again for coming on, Song. It was a pleasure speaking with you, yeah. and I'm, I'm sure we're going to see him, you know, smash his, his career over the next few years, so it was a pleasure. Um, mm. Anyway, how are you, Doyle? How's things? Good. Yeah, not too bad. I uh, I got out for a cycle in the rain this morning, and I just woke up from a nap, so I've been worse. Uh, fairly hairy at the moment, as you can see. I'm making a run for you, for the, the, hairy, the hairy weight belt. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, uh, no, all good, man. Yeah, yourself. How's how's NYC? Well, you're not in New York, right? How's US? Where are you? Well, I mean, I'm in, I'm in New York. You're yeah, still in New York, in the, but no one in the city, right? Yeah. Well, about like 35 miles from the city, so like not not you know super far away, but um, I'm, hearing, I'm hearing some crazy things about New York at the moment. I believe violence is just through the roof. Yeah, it's not. I mean, it's. Yeah, it's been a it's been a very trying time for the country, you know, and I think unfortunately leadership has has let a large portion of the country down. Um, yeah, I just think there's a lot of unrest. You know, citizens yeah. don't really know like what, you know, they don't really know what to trust. They don't really have any you know proper guidance. So, um, and that's from every you know that's from from the mayors. That's from you yeah. know the um, that the heads of, I'm not, I'm not speaking about, you know, the, the president as such, you know, you look at the, the, the upcoming election and, you know, both of them are just, both of them just want to beat each other. That's all it is. You know, it's not really about policy anymore. It's yeah. not really about, you know, what we can do for America. Um, I, I, think I, I look, I look at these things from a very far outside perspective, but one of them is 78 and one of them is 73. Surely the president is like the most stressful job you could possibly. I know. And why are all these dead motherfuckers queuing up trying to get the job? Like, <laughs> like how old are these people? I know. I know. It's. Um, I mean, it's it's pretty it's pretty worrying, you know. And I mean, you yeah. add, you have to add four years onto that as well. Yeah. Like, like, or yeah, potentially eight, you know. For for Biden, yeah. it's eight years. You know, he he'd be close to ninety as a president. But like, know, who so. works as se like? I don't know anybody that ever works at seventy eight. You know what I mean? And like, that's like a normal job. Works in a fucking shop or or is a teacher or whatever. Even teachers retire at like fifty five. Yeah. These boys are going for the presidency of the largest country 
it's probably the largest country with a single president, bar maybe Brazil in the world. I, don't know, I think America, I think, is too big for one president. I think it's, yeah. you know, we have a president. He doesn't do anything, right? He sits in his, <laughs> sits in his white fucking house and does fuck all. To, to um, be fair, I but think, he's only over uh, four million. <laughs> You know? I think I think most presidents don't do much, to be honest. But um, yeah. anyway, not the, so not, not, the, not the case in the states. Um, we have, we have. Uh, I I don't know if you've been paying too much attention, but in Ireland we've like uh, county lockdowns. So they're Yeah, I heard about three that. Three counties, and then every, well, yeah, but it's it's a bit tricky because you can't. Uh, there's no law against crossing the border, but the counties are technically in lockdown, and the border to Kildare is only 200 meters up the road. I cycled in out of Kildare today, but there's nothing wrong with cycling in out of Kildare if I don't stop somewhere in Kildare. Right, yeah. I went to Kildare and go around and then get out. So we cycled into Kildare and then we left Kildare, stopped in Wicklow, back through Kildare. But if we stop in Kildare, we're in breach of lockdown it's not law there's no law there so it's like real messy and odd and and obviously leo our Taoiseach, which is as close to a president as you can get has just stepped down so the brand new government are in so everyone in kildare and the other counties in lockdown are kicking off but uh the second wave has just hit here uh and from what i can see the second wave is hitting everyone pretty much in exact order that it has so i'm uh when's the election I think a second wave is going to be hit in America for just before the election and we're yep. heading into fucking flu season and cold season and yeah. So to, to my, I mean, I can't vote, so, you know, I don't follow it like super closely. Can but you vote I, when you get a green card? No, you have can, to be, can you, you vote at any stage? Oh, no, right. you, you, you can't, I would have to be a citizen, but um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's very far down the line, but um yeah, I mean, I think I'm pretty sure the election's in November. Um, All right. And yeah, I mean, I mean, this like, I I think, in the weirdest way possible, I think the amount of people that have had it over here is almost going to benefit them in the long run. Um, which sounds awful. Maybe. So many people yeah, no, have died. I, see, I, hear what you're I, think, yeah. I think the infection rate has spread so wide that I think the numbers are way off. I think you know the you could probably at least triple how many people have actually had it. So, you know, I think like America will probably be one of the first yeah. countries to have mass immunity. Now I could be way off. Of that. I'm, I'm certainly, I'm certainly not a, not a doctor or an expert on the matter, but you know, I think a lot of countries who did very well at maintaining, maintaining it first, you know, they could be hit worse with the second wave than yeah. you know, somewhere right. like the UK or, or the U S that is, you know, hit very hit bad initially. initially. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, off that topic, we got some we got some good, good fights tonight. <laughs> got some good fights tonight. We got a lot happening. John Jones is, is moving up to, to heavyweight, relinquished, relinquished his belt. DC is gone. Yeah. yeah. Very, very sad. Um, on, on, although, on, on one final non related MMA related topic as well, the fucking Pentagon released videos of aliens and no one has even noticed. No, no one's even noticed. They're like, you know what? COVID's going on. Just get the fucking aliens out there quick. No, no, no. <laughs> fucking aliens have been confirmed the last two weeks as well. And then, anyway, and then we'll talk about that another years, time. Like three years later, everyone will be like, oh, you didn't tell us. And they'll be like, yes, we did. We yeah, did we it. Yeah. COVID, and you didn't know. <laughs> fucking um, madness. Yeah. So, yeah. And the, the world of MMA is hopping. So, sorry, man. Go ahead. No, nah, it's all good. So, John Jones moving up to heavyweight. I think that's a very good decision. Um, I actually, Anthony Smith did an interview on him, and it was it was pretty it was actually pretty cool because Anthony Smith Smith was like I like him, man. He's I like I like Anthony well. Smith a lot. Yeah. yeah, I like him. I like him a lot. But he, you know, he said he was like for the first time, and I'm in a position to like compliment John Jones. He was like, you know, he's not holding up the division. He's like, I'm I'm done with this. You know, let me go fight in heavyweight. And he's like, you know, now the division can move on. So he's like, it's probably the most noble thing that he's ever done. Um, you know, and, and like, he made, <laughs> yeah, and he made like, he made an excellent point and, and said something along the lines of, you know, Jones, like you could, you could tell like he needs to be a champion. So for him to like, just be like, yeah, I'm good with this. I'm going to be a heavyweight champion. Like, you know, it says a lot about like his motivations coming up. Um, yeah. And Gano has also spoke out about it too, saying like, it's a good move for him. He was like, you know, he's, the light heavyweight division is, you know, obviously something that he's, I mean, he's ran through everyone. So like, you know, what is left ready? Um, and, you know, and Gani was like heavyweight hit harder, but they're slower. And, you know, his, his skill and fight IQ is going to, is going to carry so much weight in that, in, into that division. 
I'm also I'm also looking forward to seeing like you know how much power he, he carries up because he hasn't. I, I really... don't think uh, I don't think he's going to be. I think he's going to be strategically he has to change a lot because he's never a KO puncher. Yeah. So I don't think yeah. he's going to be trying to hit people with power shots. He's going to be all far more wrestling clinch focused, I think, which is fine. You know, it's, that, that probably makes sense. But uh, I think Francis is saying that because Francis has got 60 fucking pounds on him. Um, <laughs> he's looking at a little snack coming up from the... From the <laughs> I, I, yeah, was, I, I was I was interested that he, ha- that he relinquished the belt. I was kind of like, yeah. you know, why can't he go up, have a fight with Stipe, interim title because titles more titles interim or not the more titles better for the UFC and then come back down and fight Reyes or whoever Jan or the winner of that and then maybe go back up um, I think there's a lot of factors there I don't think the UFC want to give him that much leverage but also I think it's whatever happens with Stipe Francis Jones this little triangle of violence that we have going on here at heavyweight um, if Jones fights Stipe and wins I'd say part of the contract is he has to defend the belt either in a rematch at Cipe and then in Ganu, or yeah. if he beats Cipe, he has to fight in Ganu. Um, or if Cipe decides to break, take a break, and him and Ganu fight, should he win, he has to fight Cipe. And I'd say there's some sort of a two or three fight minimum at heavyweight say for for Jones at least because if there wasn't, then why would he just not drop back down? Because I mean, he weighs like 235 anyway. That is a heavyweight, you know, so he could probably just go up to like 240 and then make it back down again. So I found, I found that interesting. So I think we're going to see him at heavyweight and we're going to see him at heavyweight for a while, potentially potentially a very long time. He may never go so, back. So I actually think, you know, I think if he goes up, right, he beats and I, I would imagine he'll get in Ganu first and then Stipe. I don't think they'll give him a shot right away at Stipe. I mean, so. they, may, they may, but... I just think I think Ngannou and, and Jones is a huge money fight, and then particularly you know if he beats if he beats Ngannou, then you know I mean he's already considered one of the greatest of all time. If he beats Ngannou and then goes up and beats Stipe, you know even with all of the you know even with the PED stuff, you know even with the the you know outside of the octagon stuff, I, I think it's very very difficult to argue that he's not the the greatest of all time um but i mean we're we're having that conversation about multiple people you know if if sahudo comes back and beats volkanovsky at 145 you know like a three division champion you know if khabib beats gsp or gsp beats khabib you know there's a lot of that going on right now so um very very exciting time i was just thinking about john jones right you know the you know the way you can you know you can for me anyway i can can see people lose you know, I, I can. I'm like, I, you know, I, I could see them losing this fight. You know, blah blah. And of course, I can kind of see him potentially losing Stipe or, or losing Ngannou. But for some reason, I just cannot picture John Jones getting KO'd. I just can't see I mean, it. And, and he's, he's stepping been... into the most likely the division to, the division that everyone gets KO'd about ten times before retirement. So that's I, the that's the difficult. I'd love like, to see him get difficult. KO'd. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the kind of that's the, the like the struggle that I have because. I'm the exact same way. Like you look at him and he's like, he's never been close to, to actually losing, you know, I never think he's even that. rocked. I don't even think he's ever. That, that's, really that's and he's eaten some hard shots and he just moves forward. Mm. Um, you know, and you can't, you can't teach that. You know, he, I don't think, I don't actually think he's ever even been properly wobbled or, yeah. you know, where he's been like backed up against the cage, eating heavy shots. Um, you know, and even in the wars with, um, with Gustafsson and, and DC, you know, the first fights, like, you know, he, like he edged two of the best, light heavyweight fights we've ever seen. Um, I think he was rifle winner in, in both, but you know, some of the shots that he ate in those fights, I mean, remember his, remember his face in the hospital, like him and Gustafsson in the hospital. After yeah, that's that true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. His, like his, his lips were, were yeah. completely swollen. His eye was shut. Like, and the man just keeps, keeps moving forward. So, um, you know, you, you know, hate him or love him. Like he yeah. is an exception. I don't think we'll ever see anything like John Jones again when he retires, to be honest. Yeah. Maybe not, yeah, maybe not, because it's just the level of competition at the top of each division is just getting tighter and tighter, right? But can you imagine Stipe KO's Jones, right? It's hard not to say that he's one of the best ever, right? And also, very, imagine very Francis, imagine Francis KO's Stipe yeah. or Jones, and then the other one, <laughs> game yeah. over. He's the biggest thing in MMA. You know what I mean? Yep. So brilliant time yep. to be a fan. I don't know how many times I've said that this year. Thankfully, it's MMA is incredibly positive this year. Everything else is a bit fucking weird. But, yeah. but um, I mean, every, like it's, it's, you know, as I said, we keep having these conversations, you know, yeah. like all of these, all yeah. of these current active fighters, um, you know, are, are very much kind of getting, 
towards that sort of mark of for being a potential greatest of all time. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, don't want to. I, I don't want to go Stipe. on too much. Well, on Stipe, on Stipe, obviously we got to talk about Stipe and Kwame, right? So, I can we say it was controversial? Kind of with the eye poke. There's a bit of controversy attached to it. I don't think it's a. I don't think it was a controversial win. Really, uh, there's definitely been more controversial wins. To be honest, so, D- DC should have said, "I can't see," and then the fight would have ended in DQ. No one would have got the belt, and then he sets up another huge rematch because he would have got paid for a DQ anyway. Yeah. I know he's not thinking like that, and he's not built that way. He wants to fight, and he wants to win the fight. But if I mean, did you see the fucking eye that went the, the finger that went into his eye? Man, it was like up to here. There was like that much of his finger in his eye socket. It was absolutely disgusting. Uh, it was. It was awful, right? It was such a such a shame that it happened. Shame, however, yeah. that's, the, that's the fucking exact word for it. It's a shame. Yeah, and but however, Stipe looked great. I felt Stipe had also done a lot of damage that mm. I for the eye poke, and that's what a lot of you know a lot of people forget about. It's like you know this happened in both fights. You know, Stipe literally has to wear glasses because of the eye poke that he got from DC in the first fight. Like he damaged, right? his, yeah, he, he damaged his cornea. I think it was you know something like that. Yeah, um, but I mean. DC, out of anyone, has been guilty of multiple eye pokes true. throughout his yeah, career. Yeah, yeah, sure. true, so, true, true. But it's, it's just, it's just shit, happened. right? Yeah, this it's like, happen. we, like, I, I, I don't know. I think the gloves need to be updated to some extent. Um, and I was going to say, like, you know, perhaps what MMA needs is someone like DC, unfortunately, to get, get badly injured in the eye for people to start paying attention. But that's not fucking true because Bisping has a glass eye so yeah. Bisping was a champion as well so I know Karma is probably a bit bigger than Bisping but um, I mean how long is this going to go on for someone's going to lose an eye another yeah. eye sorry yeah. I mean, <laughs> I said someone's going to lose an eye thinking no one's lost an eye Bisping has lost a fucking eye he has one eye yeah. so, so more I, people I mean, are going to lose eyeballs get, like, that's I don't get how they can't just add you know how they can't just add like caps at the top of the fingers you know what I mean like just like something like that, where it's or or it's even yeah. like you know a, a like a, a sponge type, you know, so you don't lose the ability to grab or grapple someone, but it protects a fighter's eye, you know, like it can't a nail can't because it's not the it's not it's the nail, finger, yeah. it's the nail that does the damage. Um, so I mean, I don't get how they can't do that. But anyway, mm. back to your initial point. Thought Stipe looked ph- phenomenal. Yeah. That happened late in the third. You know, if that happened in the first round, then it's like you know what, like that doesn't feel right. But it happened in the True. third round. I feel like I feel like Stipe had won two out of three of those rounds, and then he looked phenomenal in the fourth and fifth. Um, yeah. And however, if it ended in the third because of the eye poke, I don't think we'd be complaining. We'd be like, Jesus, yeah. that's fair enough. Yeah, you yeah. know. So no, it's I funny, right? That like like one tiny decision there for for Kwame, obviously, or like the whole history of the heavyweight division is different. You know, what I mean? it's fucking. I know, I know. So it's crazy. Yeah, you're right. I mean, very very sad to see DC go. You know, I. Yeah. I I was never a big fan of DC a few years ago. And then just the more I like learned about him, the more I learned about his background, the more he, he kept talking, like I'll be a forever DC fan. and very, very sad to see him go, particularly out in the last, you know, I, I love Steve yeah. as well. So it's very much like, damn, like who do I want to win this fight? You know, do I want DC to win, but then relinquish the belt right away? Do I want Steve to essentially become the best UFC heavyweight of all time? Um, so, yeah, again, it, it is a shame that the eye poke happened, but I thought Steve Bay looked phenomenal. I thought yep. DC looked great too. You know, they did. DC, you know, at his yeah. age, like, you know, just how much I can't give the man enough credit for what he's achieved over his career. Not to mention he's a fucking welterweight, right? He's yeah. 5'10. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, yeah. It always kind of confused me. And he was like, oh, like, I don't think I can get back to 205 anymore. You know, I'm like, forget about 205, man. You're like a. You know, you could probably get to lightweight if you really tried. The belly <laughs> hanging off you. <laughs> he's yeah, five I mean, ten. Been, like Sean think, O'Malley is five eleven. Yeah, that's who we're going to talk about next. But he's five eleven. He's taller than Daniel Cormier. But didn't they talk about? You know, d- didn't he talk about? You know, when he was in the Olympics and stuff that yeah, he in fairness, he had a bit to, of a he had yeah, a bit he, of a bulky, not quite a belly, but he had like a big square core in the Olympics. So he he looked jack, but apparently he had serious issues with like weight cutting and like yeah. nutrition and stuff like that. So I think, look, I well, think like, don't, don't cut the aren't... weight, lose the belly. Then you've yeah. less weight to cut. I don't know. But, uh, I mean, look, I'm not in his body, but he's a fat yeah, motherfucker. But... He's 5'10". He should have been at <laughs> the weight or middleweight. Think... If he was a middleweight his whole career, imagine him. Ripped yeah. DC, just 
blasting people, wrestle fucking everybody. He might be the greatest middleweight of all time. We're See, talking I about think... him a heavyweight. So I think when we take size into factor, he needs more credit than people than people give him. And I, I couldn't Man. agree. I couldn't agree with Jamar. He's a fucking legend, and I'm I'm devastated to see him go. But yeah, um, pe- people forget like heavyweights can be fat. But you look at Stephen, and he's six four and shredded. Yeah, Daniel Cormier is five ten and fat. <laughs> <laughs> and they've done three of the best heavyweight fights I've ever seen. You know what I mean? So it's yeah, yeah, weird. I mean, I mean, we've seen like remember when we were we were like way up in the stands. I can't even remember what fighter was, but he was commentating, and we looked at the width of him, and he was literally I, he was he was twice the size of Anik. It was, okay. Like Anik's not a tiny man. So I think that's obviously a big fact that like he is a chunky, chunky man. You know, like he's not. Like DC is is not somebody who has a frame that I think could ever get to 170, maybe 185. Well, maybe 185. Yeah. Yeah. I am um, joking about what's right. No, I know, I know. But you know, I think like someone like me, you know, like, I'm just just under six two. Like, there's people that fight at welterweight that are six two, six three. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. know if I could ever get to 170. True. I don't think yeah, my yeah, body yeah. will yeah. allow it. You know, so yeah, well, think, yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. That's a good point. Um, so O'Malley. Anyway, O'Malley. So. Give me your I'm, opinion on this. I've got a very strong opinion on this now. So, so I have completely, completely lost all respect for the guy. I yeah, think he's handled his loss terribly. Um, the video of him dancing Salty on his Instagram made idiot. him look so bad. Like I just, I feel like it. It feel like it just proved that Cheeto caused the the injury and caused the damage. So it wasn't yeah. like this fluke thing. Like he got he got kicked. It damaged his nerves and it, and his foot went out. You know, or his, or his yeah. knee blew out. And then like. Five days later, he's like, "Oh, I'm good and dancing," and he got he got carried out in a stretcher. Like it's a bad, bad look. Like, and he's like, "I'm better than Cheeto." And it's like, "He didn't show that, did you?" Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. like, well, you can't. You could can say that as much as you want, but like, you lost. You lost. Like he's he he also like, screaming in agony on the ground after yeah, the fight. He's like, yeah. like, you have a dead leg, mate. Yeah. This is you're literally a dead leg. Like do we we're we're now how many days? Six six days, five days removed from the fight, seven days removed from the fight, sorry, Saturday, Saturday. No injury, there's no break, there's no ligament damage, there's nothing. And then he's dancing. Like bad, now he may look. he may well be just choosing to go the the Mayweather route, and that's fair enough, right? As in embrace the hate and make a fortune. I mean, is he's gone up over one point three million on Instagram followers yeah. and stuff like that. So, you know, you need emotion. It doesn't matter if it's positive or negative. You just want people to tune in to see you lose or see or see you win. But um, I think he probably needs to go up and wait, man. Uh, he's five eleven. This is like the third fight out of thirteen that he's got a bad leg injury. So like, if he's gonna if he's gonna throw the kicks he does, and he can whip a kick in fairness to him, he clearly just doesn't have enough muscle there to protect his fucking yeah. his nerves and his and his and his bones. Like he, what did he do to his knee there in that in that last fight? Same thing, you know. He's, he's fall, not that he's falling apart, but I just think he's potentially too long. Like John Jones doesn't get injuries like that because he's a super athlete. But I don't think O'Malley is held together like John Jones is. So I, you know, I think he's probably, uh, I think he's probably um, better off at, at at featherweight. Maybe he's still only twenty five. I think uh, um, I don't know. I don't, but then again, I mean, some featherweight. I was just- I was just, there, so. yeah. I mean, I was just about to say, you know, but at the same time, you you look at the top of that bantamweight division; it's stacked. So you know, like it's it's stacked either way. So um, yeah, I think you know, I've lost a huge amount of respect for him. I think you might be right. You know, I think he's kind of he's got a big enough kind of fan base now where this will probably gain him more fans, and then you know, so many more people are gonna more know, haters, tune in definitely to, more haters. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and so many people are gonna tune in to see him to see him lose. I think like if they run that fight back, that's huge. That's a big, big, big yeah. scrap now, you yeah. know, because big like, fan of Cheeto like Vera. Other, yeah, big fan. Big He's fan. a bad motherfucker. He reminds he me of, like these, you know, an, an MMA fighter ten years ago. Like shut your mouth, yes. I'll kill you. Yes, you know, yeah. Like, shut that's up. A, like, I'll see you in the cage and I'll murder your ass. You know. Yeah, that's <laughs> a great. I right. mean, his line, his line where he's like, my th- my uh, my skin's thicker than O'Malley's mom. Like, yeah. I, I was like cracking up at that. Um, yeah, big, big fan of Cheeto. I mean, Cheeto, like, as we've just had song on, you know, I mean, that was an absolute scrap. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like, both both of them were just phenomenal in that fight. And, yeah. um, you know, obviously. Anyone hasn't seen that, check that fight out. Very controversial yeah, decision. But you want a bit of controversy in your life, you know what I mean? So. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Song was happy. You know, he doesn't want to run it back. He thinks he's done all the right things. So, you know, 
I, I still want to see that fight though. So hopefully, yeah, yeah, yeah. hopefully yeah. it happens again later on down the line. But you know, if Gio is going to be a big star and he has a controversial decision in his past, the bigger he gets, the bigger rematch is when it happens, and the better it is for Song. So he's right. He shouldn't fight him again. He should fight him again in three years or something. You know, assuming he doesn't, he isn't forced up to featherweight. Be given out, given out young he is. Um, yep, definitely. One, one, one other. One other big mention from, from 253. Uh, well, I suppose there's two people in this conversation, JDS and Biggie Boy. So we had Jarzinho, Biggie Boy, Rosenstrike winning by KO in the second round, if my memory second serves. Yep. Um, did you read the article? Did you read the article that I did on the fight? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. I did. Big, big, big fan of Biggie Boy. Uh, yep. Just love the way, he, just love his attitude, love how he talks. Uh, love how impressive his English is. He comes yep. from Surinan, like he speaks English like you or me. Um, he's got a he's got an amazing style, and we have many years of him at heavyweight. He's one of the younger yep. heavyweights in the division, and he is killing people. Uh, so I was delighted to see him back on track, and I really look forward to him and Ngannou rematching potentially for a belt yep. at some point down the line. I, lo- I um, love what he said about Ngannou as well. Did you hear him afterwards? And he was like, you know, if Ngannou gets it next, you know, I wish him all the best. I want to fight him again. You know, I hope he wins so we can fight again. Like, you know, just. Imagine respect. getting sparked out cold like that and just being like, oh, all the best, bud. You know, like, yeah, yeah, he yeah. seems like such a good guy. So, class. Yeah, yeah, class big, big fan. I'm also very happy with that article because I pretty much broke it down to a, to a, to a T and pretty yep. much predicted the outcome. Yep. Second round TKO. So very happy with that. Um, so, JDS. yeah, anyway, tonight's, tonight's fight. Just, I don't want just, to talk about it. Just it JDS. breaks my heart. I know. My heart. Just the shot to put him down was, was you know, no. I've never been hit by Jairzinho fucking Rosenstrike. Excuse my language again. Uh, I've never been hit by Jairzinho Rosenstrike. So I can't really say oh, it's not a big shot. But if you look at it, it's like, it's like, he like misses the right hook. JDS goes to JDS's left, to Jairzinho's right. And he just kind of reaches out and like hits him at the very end of a really weak punch and JDS just drops. So and that's three KOs in a row. Um, it's sad to see He's someone get... On me. Oh, am I? Hmm. You there? You gonna come back or what? I can hear you. You hear oh, me? Oh, there you are. Yeah, you're back. You're back. You froze for like ten seconds. Your hands in the air. Yo. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I can still hear me anyway. Well, I suppose that's pretty obvious, given that my ears are attached to my head and so is my mouth. But uh, <laughs> you froze then for like two seconds. So, um, yeah, it's just it's it's sad to see a legend start losing by KO. But I think. Yeah. Like you know, and it happens in a lot of divisions, but it's just such, it's just such a steep fall off the cliff at heavyweight. You know, as soon as your chin is gone, yep. Yep. you just start getting murked. And um, the only thing I will say, you know, to it to in he's fighting JDS's, animals though, yeah, he's, but in JDS's top defense, talent. right? Rosenstruck, the people that like he knocked Crowder out with a check jab. Like Crowder woke yeah. up and he was yeah, like, yeah. "Where am I?" Like it was literally just. Straight down the pipe, just a, a clean yeah. jab that caught him on the chin, and crowded like just he was like, "What the hell just happened in nine yeah, seconds?" Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So like, like Rosenstruck has like, the the death touch. Yeah, he does. He does. That. But I think JDS has lost five out of five out of his last six losses are by KO. Yeah, he's lost his last three in a row um, mm. via, via TKO. So we should probably just rematch over him versus JDS for like. I'm gonna make a joke about them both getting KO'd a million times. I won't bother. Let's just move on. I mean, JDS. The only, thing the only thing I'll say, like JDS, is for everyone. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Everyone, everyone forever. Well. Everyone he's forever. Been, every he's been at the top of his career for so long. Like the yeah. names that he's fought, literally every top ten contender. You know, in the in the UFC over the last ten years, knows who JDS is. You know? In fairness, he looked damn good in the fight yep. up until yep. the KO. He did look good. He was cracking. He, like, and Jairzinho a world champion kickboxer. I was like, I don't know how many fights in kickboxing before he came to MMA. So that man is a season, season, season striker. Yep. Um, and JDS held his own, but yeah, hopefully, hopefully he can uh, pull it together. Um, I don't, I just don't, I just don't like seeing people getting continually KO'd because you just know it's not healthy. So. Um, but talk yeah. to me. Uh, I think to, I think Munoz and Edgar is probably the only fight really worth speaking about tonight. Well, but, not you know. necessarily. So, There's so the a main few, card, but... the main card, unfortunately, is 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 very poor in my opinion. Um, you know, we've got we've obviously got Pedro Munoz and, and Frankie Edgar, which is a great great fight. Um, we booked like got twice, o- right? and Men- Menafield, which is another big fight. 
unfortunately, then though big. we have um, big in terms of the size of their bodies, maybe because they're yeah. heavyweights. It's yeah. not a big fight, um, <laughs> but no, well, they're they're light heavyweights. So, um, but yeah, big big boy. Your know, feels huge, um, but then like the third fight on the main card is very confusing to me because. Marcin Prachnio uh, and, and Mike Rodriguez. Um, Rodriguez. Rodriguez is frightening. Like, he won Dana White's Contender Series. Um, well, that's how he got his contract with a flying knee in the first round. He's six foot four with an 83 inch reach. And what weight division is he? Sorry. He's light heavyweight, right? Um, mm-hmm. So, Mike Rodriguez is scary, but like, he's coming off. I think he's essentially like one and two in his last two fights uh, or last three fights. Sorry. And practically I was coming off like two first round knockouts and like Sam Alvey knocked him out in his, I think it was his UFC debut. So like he was, he was on an eight fight winning tree practically now in one. And then literally he's come to the UFC and he's looked like he can't fight. Look, he looks like an amateur. So it's like, how is that the third, you know, that's, that's a prelim fight if ever I've seen one. And that's the yeah. third, last, third last fight of the night. Um, one, it's I'm it's super big. Exci- one I'm super excited for though, Daniel Rodriguez um, and, and Dwight Grant. Um, that was supposed to be, yeah, that's a great fight. I'm a big fan of Daniel Rodriguez. Um, he was supposed to fight Kevin Holland in his last scrap. And unfortunately, um, Kevin, I think Kevin Holland had to pull out. So um, Gabriel Green stepped up on short notice. He still took the fight. You know, very, very different competitors and great boxing, like really slick, super powerful guy. Um, you know, he's got a ton of ton of KO finishes. So he's very exciting. Like I would definitely, definitely watch that. Um, he was supposed to be he was supposed to be fighting somebody else, but so that's that's changed like very recently. Um, I think like yesterday. I can't can't think of who who he's supposed to be fighting. It'll be tricky um, to bring oh, in. It's, it's it gonna was, be really was, tricky to bring in last minute replacements at the moment because they're supposed yeah. to be in a two week bubble, right? So yeah, they probably I think they probably all are though. I think I think they had reserve fighters knowing what's yeah, going yeah, on. Yeah, he, fair he, enough. Was yeah, speak, uh, he was supposed to speak. He was supposed to fight Takashi Sato, who's a that would have been. a fuck i'm disappointed i didn't i didn't realize that it got canceled literally until i just checked shit um but yeah anyway so, I, I, you watching him yeah you, you know, i'm gonna watch him yeah i'm gonna uh, i'm hoping i might to- get up but i'm not i'm not sure i'm fucking tired <laughs> well i really i really want to see like i think munoz munoz and, and Edgar is going to be a hell of a lot give of me fun. a pick there yeah give me a pick there oh god that's a difficult one because i mean munoz is no joke um you know he's he's very very good edgar i think Ed, edgar's at the back end of his career now you know munoz is, is younger he's, he's used to the division um mm. i I'm, I'm leaning towards munoz but i think if anyone's going to pull Close. up and up right, anyone's yeah. going to pull something off it's going to be frankie edgar um i mean i'd love to see frankie do it but i also like munoz so I do, i'm just excited for the fight i think it's going to be yeah. super technical super fast like it's going to be a lot of fun to watch yeah. it's going to be fast it's gonna be, it's any high level fight from featherweight down. It's just high speed and oh. action. So it's uh, yeah, I'm delighted Frankie actually made it to bantamweight. I I like there was a while there I never thought he'd go, knowing full well he could make it. I was like, I when he I suppose when he lost Aldo for the second time. I was like, all right, hopefully he'll go down. And then obviously yeah, yeah. he had the fights with Max that's, and stuff. But that's ideally when he should have done it. That's when he should have um, done. He's gone down in weight later in his career. You know, like uh. It's yeah, it's tough. He's a very but, old bantamweight. If you look at heavyweight, right, the average age is like thirty-five or something. Yeah, thirty-six. Yeah. Edgar's thirty-six. If you look at bantamweight, the average age is like twenty-seven or something, twenty-eight. So he's definitely how, an older statesman. How mad is it that he was a lightweight champion? Like it's know, insane, right? isn't it? Like it's but crazy. It, it, it also shows like the development of overall MMA. Like like yeah. Frankie, the Frankie Edgar, who was the champion a few years ago. There's no way he's 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 beating a Khabib. There's no way he's probably he's probably not win, he's probably not winning too many fights in the top ten at all now because no. they're all bigger and they're all no. they're all higher skilled. So it's it's we're watching we're watching the sport evolve in front of our eyes. Um, and uh, most most notably and most obviously is in the female divisions now. You know, like Amanda Nunes is the the. I won't say the Chuck Liddell, like she's way better than the Chuck Liddell. She's like the Fedor Emelianenko of, of, of yeah. female MMA right now. You know, she's a million, million miles ahead. Um, but that won't last. There, there will be someone, uh, there will be several people, you know, five years from now there'll be, there'll probably be five or 10 people that we believe would, would have really given Amanda a scrap because yeah. now we have people training MMA more, you know, because they know they can make money. So, so I, I also, think... Sorry, Nunes is confirmed to fight... Um, 
Anderson. Uh, Megan Anderson. Yes, yes, yes. Mr. Anderson. Uh, Mrs. Anderson. She's big. She can strike. She's got takedown defense. Nunes has to take this fight to the ground. Has to take this fight to the ground. She's I think not she murks I don't, her. I don't I think, think she she's... murks her inside too. KO? Yep. I, think I don't know, Nunes... man. If you look at Megan Anderson, man, like the flashes of her stand-up, she's, she's long as she fights long. She's, she's a brilliant fucking stand-up fighter. So I'm interested I just... to see. I think it's too early for... for, for Megan, but um, very interesting story. Like Amanda Nunes has never really fought someone that's like she's fought big people, obviously Cyborg and so on and so forth. But she's never really fought someone that's real long, real rangy, you know that kind of way. So it's yeah, interesting. It's yeah. new. It's a new look. So I, I'm in. I'm I'm happy to watch it. You know, I I don't feel I don't have the sacrificial lamb feels that I usually do when they line up a body for Nunes to devour at the bottom of the fucking mountain. See, th- this is the thing, right? Because when you know. When the Spencer fight was announced, you know, everyone was like, oh, my God, that, you know, Spencer's a real threat to Amanda. You know, she's a phenomenal I never grappler. thought that. I never thought that. But, like, a lot of people did. And, like, I was like, this is going to be so, so bad. Like, to the point where I was laughing at people being like, you're, you're, you're saying that, like, you're saying that because she's a wrestler, she's going to beat Amanda Nunes, who's, what, a brown, brown belt in judo? Yeah, um, black belt in jiu-jitsu. Black belt in jiu-jitsu. It's like, yeah. what? I, I, like, I, this, I like this, this fight. Pretty- this fight is uh, the challenger's path to victory is stand up, yeah. and Amanda can stand. Um, whereas that fight, it was the path to victory was unlikely because Amanda has two big blockers: the judo and the jiu jitsu. I, I think it's I a bit more of a gamble on the feet. Nunez, Nunez power is just she's like the, yeah, the Mike different. Tyson yeah. of yeah, of female different. MMA. You know what I mean? Like. She the way she hits people, it's like it's like oh you like I kind of like I cringe when I see it. I'm like oh this is so like it's like I wouldn't want to fucking take that. You know what I mean? Like she, oh, she is I, she is number one on my list of people I'd least like to fight. Oh, D- Damien my Damien my is number one on the list of people. If I had to fight someone in the UFC, oh yeah, that's going to get submitted. Yeah, you're going to going to get. Amanda going to is, is the total opposite end of that spectrum. She would beat the living hell out of you, and she would let yeah. you back up again, beat you again, and yeah. So she's number one on my list of people I would it's not. It's that, like, or I would I would absolutely hate to fight Joanna as well because actually, she would. Or she would. Davis and Figueroa. Who? Uh, Davis and Figueroa, small oh, little fella, kick the yeah. legs off me, yeah. and just he's a violent motherfucker too. Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. I know it's very much getting away from me today. Apologies very, for um, It's very, very funny though. Like I put something like that up on Twitter um, a while back and it's like, you know, who would be the, the you know, the first person you fight as opposed to the the, the, lead, the last person you fight. And somebody said, um, what's his name? Elias Theridou? Or I don't yeah, know how yeah. to pronounce his last yeah, yeah. name. The, the, the Theodoro, like, I think. Yeah, Theodoro, Theodoro, I think it is. And and somebody commented, it's like Elias Theodoro, the, 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 however the fuck you say that name. Um <laughs> And it was like, I'd take his boop shots for five minutes straight, no problem. <laughs> or five rounds straight, his boop shots. I was howling at the screen when I saw that. Yeah, he doesn't, doesn't have that's much. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty good one. But um, anyway, thanks again to, um, to Song for coming on. It was a pleasure yeah. speaking with you. Um, and I, b- I believe that was his wife that was translating. I didn't quite catch that at the start. But um, yeah, thank, thank you again for, for translating. Good to catch up with you, Doyle. And um we will reconvene next week you too brother all right uh episode 15 coming to you live next week